Good morning. Good morning. May I be the first to be not to say Happy Father's Day to your dads. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. I was wondering what kind of response I would get. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it is a, a gorgeous day outside today, and so we know it's also a gorgeous day in here as we come into God's presence and celebrate His love and are gathered in His name. A couple of things before we begin our worship today. Uh, if you would turn in your bulletin to page 5, see information there about our mission of the month. You may start with children and we'll talk about that quite a bit, so I'm not going to highlight that again. I think you've heard about that quite a bit. Uh, also, I want to mention uh, that the Trees from Home decorating has begun. If you'd like to help out with that, Tuesdays, June 20th and 27th, meeting at 9 o'clock here at the church if you want to help make Christmas trees for troops. Uh, it's a great opportunity uh, for us to be involved in, in a mission of, of love and kindness. This Friday, we will be putting together our floor for the front before the fourth parade, and any welcome and any hands who might be willing to help assemble this uh, on Friday between 5.30 and 7 will be most welcome. If you are able to do that and willing, uh, I don't think there's a whole lot of creativity involved. I think it's a matter of a matter of more of assembly, well, maybe some creativity, but if you're able to help with that, we would sure appreciate it. Uh, speak to me on the way out and let me know that you'd be able to we'll line up for that. And also, if you're able to uh, to be a part of the parade, that would be super as well. I think I'm going to go all the way to the back cover. <clears throat> this Thursday evening, we have uh, our women's event. Uh, Nick at night, we're calling it, because we're going to hear about uh, mission and service in Nicaragua from our own Cheryl Peterson, who uh, is a professor of physical therapy at Concordia University and takes a team down there every year and works with somebody who not only is concerned about medical missions but also about the, the love of Christ. And so uh, we also would see this as possibly a prelude to doing a trip ourselves next year to Nicaragua. If you have not signed up yet, there is a sign-up sheet on the way out. Please do, please do so if you could. It would be a big help to uh, those of us who are uh, helping to plan the, the meal. And guys, any of you who would be willing to help me do some cooking or setting up, uh, please let me know also on the way out. If I get all kinds of stuff, or people volunteering for everything, uh, uh, maybe I'll even be able to keep it all up uh, and then there's uh, the uh, Handbell Concert, just to make you aware of the Handbell Concert tomorrow, featuring uh, the uh, Milwaukee Handbell Ensemble, which has their own history. I think that's all I'm going to mention for now, unless anybody else has an announcement for the good of our congregation today. But let's begin our worship. We're turning to Divine Service 3 on Father's Day. Uh, it, it seemed appropriate to. Okay, this is a reminder to you, I set this up on purpose to silence your cell phones. So, so now you'll be, be appropriately reminded of, uh, of, of that. Hold on. Okay. Let's begin our worship. We're using Divine Service 73. Again, it seemed appropriate, uh, a, a service that a lot of that to work with uh, our old divine service, uh, our old service from the Lutheran hymnal. Uh, we'll be using that today uh, in celebration of the, uh, the dads who grew up with that service. So, divine service three, let's begin with him six or five. <clears throat>
Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord.
we pray. O loving shepherd, whose promises are always certain and whose word is always true, send your Holy Spirit to us that we might find strength and comfort each new day. Lead us through dangers, difficulties, and hardships, so that we persevere with faith and hope. In your precious name we pray, with the Father and the Spirit, our one Lord, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the reading of our lessons. The Old Testament lesson is from the book of Exodus, the 19th chapter, beginning with the second verse. After they set out from Rephidim, they entered the desert of Sinai, and Israel camped there in the desert in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain and said, This is what you are to say to the house of Jacob, and what you are to tell the people of Israel. You yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt and how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of the nations you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. So Moses went back and summoned the elders to of the people and set before them all the world words the Lord had commanded him to speak. The people responded together, We will do everything the Lord has said. So Moses brought their answers back to the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christ overflow to the many. 
This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the harvest fields. He called his twelve disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. Simon the Zealot and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instruction. Do not go among the Gentiles or any enter, enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received. Freely give. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please again be seated as we join together in singing the next hymn.
Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father <clears throat> and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text I want to spend some time on today is from the Gospel lesson, the ninth chapter of Matthew, where we read these words. <clears throat> when Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. This is our text. Brothers and sisters in our Lord Jesus Christ, this past Thursday, I went out to McDonald's to have a conversation with someone over coffee. And while I was waiting in line, there was a young lady ordering next to me. She had three kids under the age of five, and she was clearly feeling worn down, tired, and weary. Obviously, I didn't know any of her situation, but I did feel a great deal of compassion for her as she tried to order and handle her kids all at the same time. Now, a little backstory before I share the rest of my encounter. About two weeks ago, I found this Jimmy, Jimmy John's gift card laying in the parking lot of Piggly Wiggly. I picked it up thinking I was just removing some trash from the ground, figured it was probably expired or a fully used card. Much to my surprise, however, when I checked at home, it still had about 15 bucks on it. I called Jimmy John's to see if there was some way to track down its owner so that I could mail it to him or her. And they told me, no, it was a prepaid car, there really is no way of finding out whose it is. But I didn't really want the card. I didn't really feel good about spending someone else's money on me. Back to last Thursday. So here I am in this line, and this voice rings in my ear. Pay it forward. Okay. A thousand other times, I would probably have just ignored this woman, but for whatever reason, motivated by that voice and thinking about that card, I leaned over and asked her if I could just pay her bill. She had a look of astonishment and said, Really? And I said, Yes. She said, Why? I said, I don't know. You have three kids? And she said, okay. And ironically, her bill was nearly exactly the amount that's left on the gift card. I sat down with my friend. We had coffee. Forty-five minutes later, the woman came over to me and my friend, tapped me on the shoulder, tears in her eyes, and said, I just want you to know that I spent the last week in Door County all alone with my kids. My husband had to work at the last minute, and... I wanted to still give them a little vacation, but it was so stressful, I really didn't have much fun. To top it all off, I went to an ice cream place, and my little one was so excited about the ice cream that she screamed in delight. And a man came over to me and said, what's wrong with your kids? And made me feel so small, I just decided to come home. I was feeling very sour about people and about life, my stress, my husband, and along you came to offer to pay for my meal. God bless you. You made me feel so much better. I stood up and gave her a hug, and she squeezed me tight. She left, and I finished my conversation with my friend. Here's my question for you. Do you notice the harried and hassled and broken and beaten and tired and lonely and lost and hurting? Do you notice them? Or do you see through them to the goal you have for yourself? I must tell you that, as I said earlier, a thousand other times, that woman might have been unnoticed by me because I'm so often just thinking about what I got to get done. And maybe I wouldn't have noticed her too, just gotten my coffee. But what a reminder for me that God's love and mercy and compassion are needed all the time and in every place. 
And that we, as God's people, are called to be more mindful of that fact. In our text for today, we see the Jesus who notices. The Jesus who cares. The Jesus who acts. If you were to pick up the Bible from your pew rack and take a look at the headings to chapters 8 and 9 of Matthew, you would see that preceding these verses of our text, Jesus came to a man with leprosy. He helped a Roman centurion's servant, brought health to two demon-possessed men, healing to a paralytic, a woman with a continual flow of blood, two blind men, a de demon-possessed mute man, and raised a dead girl. He also comes to a tax collector named Matthew, the very writer of this gospel, and calls him to be his disciple. Wow, what a time for Jesus. What a day. But if it weren't clear enough from these paragraph headings and mindful actions of Jesus, Matthew makes it even more clear in the text. He writes, when Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Jesus notices. Let me say that again. Jesus notices. He noticed the man with leprosy, whom everyone else was avoiding because of his skin problem. He noticed the demon-possessed men, whom everyone else was avoiding because of their inappropriate screams and violent actions. He noticed Matthew, the tax collector, whom everyone avoided because they viewed him as a traitor to the Romans and as a cheat. He noticed the woman whose 12-year flow of blood had continually marked her as unclean. He noticed, and he cared, and he acted. Would you notice this, these people? Do you look around you and see the harassed and helpless, the hurting and the lonely, and do you actually care about them? Or are they just glanced over as background noise while you think about your business, your needs, your problems? Or worse, is seen as annoyance because they require an extra step out of the way, an extra word, an extra dollar, an extra measure of patience. St. Paul reminds us in our epistle lesson <clears throat> that we were once harassed and helpless spiritually. He says, you see at just the right time when we were still powerless Christ died for the ungodly, the harassed and the helpless. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for, on this, for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Lost, condemned, headed for destruction. We said it in the Confession of Sins today. Poor, miserable sinners. We didn't deserve his attention. But Jesus noticed, and he cared, and he acted. And on a hard wooden cross 2,000 years ago, for harassed and helpless people like you and me, he opened up his hands and accepted our punishment our pain, our brokenness and sadness and suffering and sorrow and declared, I notice you. I know what's inside. I know what you're going through. And I am here for you. As the Son of God, I bleed for you and offer you everything I am and everything I have so that you might be free of those burdens and know the peace that passes all understanding. And we are free because we know that there is ultimately nothing that can stop us from living forever with him in glory year after year after year because he noticed 
and he cared and he acted. How will you receive such news? Will you be like the Pharisees who immediately after Jesus does all these good things declare that he must be possessed by a demon whose hearts are so blinded by their own self-interest that they don't even see the real needs of people? Or will the Holy Spirit open your, up your eyes to stop looking past people and to start being mindful of the struggles and needs of the people you see? Let me say it plainly. You are in the world. You are God's salt and light in our community. Each one of you is part of God's family, part of God's team. The harvest is plentiful. You have known and experienced the love and compassion of God. You are equally able to share with those who are harassed and helpless, helping them in their physical needs and sharing with them what Jesus means to you and what it means to belong to a part of the family of God. There are so many who are floundering in the mire of upset, troubles and disasters in their life, and they're looking for someone to care, to notice, and to do something. You may be the only one in this situation who has the, the consciousness of God's compassion in the places where you live and where you work. God's calling you to represent the length and breadth and height and depth of his compassion. Now you might say, but I can't do that. I'm just an ordinary sort of person. That's way out of my zone. If that's the case, then it's good that the calling of the 12 disciples immediately follows our text. When Jesus picks the 12 disciples, no specific qualifications are mentioned. One might think that the Gospel writer would have mentioned that Jesus chose these men because of their prior experience, or their great potential, or their spiritual insight. But none of that is part of the text. It's as if the Gospel writer, Matthew, the tax collector, almost bends over backwards to assure us that none of these people was special in any way. Who among us here is qualified to heal a broken world and help those who are harassed and helpless? Yet God has called us to be his contemporary disciples. We may not be qualified, but by God's grace, we have been authorized to be his disciples. And that's rather wonderful when you come to think of it. Perhaps he sees in us more potential than we see in ourselves. Perhaps he can take the experiences that you have had in life and use them to help others. Perhaps he wants us to learn to lean on him and to let the Holy Spirit use us to help the harassed and helpless. Jesus seems to delight in taking ordinary, everyday people, people who don't have any qualifications or credentials, and selecting them to be his disciples. He promises us that he will give us what we need to be his disciples, and he sends us out into the world, as he did those first disciples, to the harassed and helpless, to share with the dying world a word of salvation, and to offer healing for a broken people. May God help you notice. May God help you care. May God help you act. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please stand. We join together in speaking the words of our common confession, the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, 
begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of the salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. We entrust to your care, Lord God, that which you have already given to us, these gifts. Use them, we pray, for ministry, that your word might be proclaimed in word and action, both among us and throughout this community and ultimately throughout the world. We entrust them to your care for that purpose in Jesus' name. Amen. A couple of items to remember in our prayers today. Um, I want to begin with some great news. 69 years of marriage for two couples in our church today, uh, one of which is here, Ralph and Lorraine, 
are celebrating 69 years, although I'm, I'm counted the roses and I think it's only 12. Okay. <laughs> but I think Gail's older than 12, so I'm pretty sure that means that they really do have 69 years. Congratulations to you, right? And also, yeah. and also Jack and Barb Dyer are celebrating 69 years of marriage on Tuesday. So these guys on Monday and those guys on Tuesday, wow, how many times do you have it that people get to 69 and do it consecutive days? Think about that. So long ago and, and uh, it must have been, was your wedding on a Saturday? Do you remember? It was a Saturday? So then the, the Dyers must have gotten married on a Sunday. I don't know, but uh, it's kind of neat. Just, two days, just uh, two days and 69 years. So congratulations, and we uh, will be including them in our prayers today. Also, good news from uh, Gail Hargan sharing with us that her son Bob got very good test results, and they think that uh, they've been able to completely remove the melanoma that he had. Patrick Pomeroy is going to be uh, pre prepping, getting ready for surgery on July 10th, coming up rather quickly. We certainly pray God's blessing for him as he uh, gets ready for that surgery. Also, Vi Ulrich is continuing her treatments for lymphoma, and Pastor Peter Kelm also continuing uh, uh, with some measure of treatments for his cancer. I'd like to ask at this time if there are any other special prayers that we can remember before our Heavenly Father today. Yes, Paula. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, uh, it seems week after week we have other things happening. We certainly remember those, uh, those uh, congressmen. It was, in what, to my mind, a heartening sight to see uh, the Democrats and Republicans kneeling down together and sharing a word of prayer. I just thought that was very moving to see uh, um, people crossing the aisles and joining together. What else? Yes, Kathy. Keep our president and others, uh, uh, our other government leaders uh, safe in his care, in God's care, so that uh, they are protected from further harm. Any others today? Then please stand for prayer. <clears throat> we will use the responsive prayer that you find on page four of your bulletin. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the Church, that she would faithfully continue the work of the Twelve Apostles, and that God would bless her every effort to enlarge his flock. Let us pray to the Lord. For those called to be fathers, that God would strengthen and preserve their faith so that they may be well equipped to lead and teach their households. Grant rest and peace of mind to all who are overwhelmed by the responsibility of their vocation. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who desire to be fathers, that God would give them peace, wait with them, and comfort them with the assurance of his perfect will. Let us pray to the Lord. For laborers, for the harvest, that God would continue to call faithful pastors to the ministry, and let teachers, deaconesses, and other church workers heed his calling, that they may be blessed in their training and sustained in their vocation. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are sick and suffering, that God would look with compassion upon his servants who are facing mental or physical illness, surgery, pain, loneliness, or grief, that they may be reminded that they are not facing these things alone and be comforted with the hope of eternal life. We especially lay into your care, O Lord, uh, Pastor Peter, as well as Violet and Patrick and Bob. We also, O oh Lord, think of those uh, uh, congressmen who were hospitalized getting over the, 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 the struggle that they had this past week. Uh, we also pray for all those who are hurting, harried, and helpless. Let us pray to the Lord. 
For all the saints who have gone before us and now rest from their labors, let us give thanks to God, that we might remain faithful even to death and be brought to share in the joy of eternal life with them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we rejoice with Ralph and Lorraine and with Jack and Barb. We know that you have been with them in their life together. We know that you have blessed their marriages. And we pray, Lord, that you would continue to surround them with your love and peace and strength. We thank you for the example they provide for us of a loving relationship, of fatherhood and motherhood. And we pray that you would uh, continue to surround them with your Holy Spirit and bless their joy in you. Let us pray to the Lord. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord. Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Sum up all our prayers in the prayer Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the Love peace of the Lord be with you all. 